Hi everyone, it's Mark Rep, Technology Trainer of Port Huron Schools, and today I'm going to show you Screencastify and how to use it to record Google Slides. Now we've got a PSA today that we're working on and uh, it's in Google Slides and what we're going to do is take Screencastify to record the different slides that are in the slideshow. So the first thing you need to do is to go to Google and search for Screencastify and make sure that you have it in your extensions bar. So I'm going to do a quick search and you can see that Screencastify is right here. It's the first result that you get when you type in Screencastify into Google and it'll have some stars which means that that's the Chrome extension and that's what you want. So go ahead and click on it. It will take you out to the Chrome Web Store where you can then add it to Google Chrome. If this button is green, then it's already been added. If it's blue, then you'll need to click on it and then add it to Chrome. It will then show up right up here in your extensions bar as a black film strip icon. But the first thing you'll need to do is to sign in with your Google account. So click sign in with Google and set the permissions. You'll make sure that you want camera and microphone. Make sure that these two boxes are checked and click next. And when this comes up, make sure that you click allow. And to make sure that you record both your camera and microphone, you'll want to make sure to click allow here as well. You're done and now you're ready to record. So now you're set up and when you click on the Screencastify screen video recorder button in your extensions bar, it will bring this up. And you should see tab, desktop, and cam. If you're recording this on a Chromebook, it already has a built-in webcam, so this will be showing. If you'd like to re record your face in the corner of your video so you can see yourself speaking, you'll click Tab. Notice right here that I have my microphone selected. And as I speak, you can see that my microphone is working because there's a little VU meter going up and down here. If I click on this, students who have a low-pitched voice or a soft voice can see that they can crank up the volume on their output and then it'll record at a much higher volume. I have a pretty loud voice, so I'm going to keep mine right where it is. I'll click just above this to close this setting. Now if you want your webcam showing, you can check this checkbox. And you can actually control where your webcam shows in the bottom left, right, top right, or top left by clicking this button. Most people choose in the bottom right corner, so I'll click that. Buttons are really important, these two buttons. This button will also take you to your recordings, and this button right here, which is your advanced settings. One of the advanced settings is to change the countdown. Right now it's set at three seconds, but you could also change it to five seconds. A good alternative to a quick bang, 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 you may want a little bit more time to get yourself ready. I'll close out of here by clicking this little arrow. When you click right here, this sort of blank white area here, if you click on it, that will close the recording window. And here, make sure that you give your slideshow a name. I typed my name right here. Just go ahead and type right into this little box. And now I'll let you in on a little tip. When you're ready to record, go ahead and click Record tab. It will give you that three, three two, one. Two, now click one. Present. And this way, your presentation is in full screen before it starts recording. And since we chose tab recording, you also have some additional features down here in the bottom left corner. For example, this button right here, this will allow you to key in on certain important parts of your presentation with a little white spotlight. This can be very helpful if you want to key in on specific words or something that you want your viewers to pay close attention to. To turn that off, just click on it again. You also have the ability to pause at any time, and you can see that when I click on that, over here, right in this area, it tells me what the keyboard shortcut is for start and stop. To resume recording, it's Alt-Shift-P. And the same thing to begin your recording. Alt-Shift-P will work to start recording without having to click any buttons at all. If you want to annotate over your slideshow, you can click this button, which looks like a brush, and then you can annotate over certain key elements of your slideshow, such as drawing a circle around some things. If you make a mistake, you also have an eraser here. This is the small eraser, 
And this square box right here is the big eraser that erases everything that's on the screen all at once. This button right here will show a clock in the bottom left corner and then you can see how long you've been recording for. Now remember, I chose to pause my recording with the keyboard shortcut Alt-Shift-P. If I press Alt-Shift-P right now, I can continue this way or I can continue by clicking this button. And you can also hide these tools by clicking on the X. When you're done with your recording, you can either use the keyboard shortcut of Alt-Shift-P or you can come up here to the little red dot, click on it, and click Stop. Now that you're done recording your slideshow, you've got some options. Now remember, it has been recorded to Google Drive, and if you want to share this with your teacher, you'll want to click this little button right here, the Share button, and then you've got a choice to either share it on Google Drive or share it to your YouTube channel. But an even better option is to click Google Drive and then click Get Link. The advantage to Google Drive is that you get a shareable link immediately that you can click on. As soon as you click on it, it will highlight in blue. And then click Copy Link. Now the shareable link has been copied and you can paste it with control V. Now I can close out of this window, open up a new tab, and then go directly to Google Classroom. I'll click on the Apps Launcher over here, also known as the Waffle. Now when I go to the Google Classroom of my teacher, you can see that there's an Open button, and it says Turn in Screencasts here. I'm going to click Open, and then to turn in my screencast, I can click Add, and you've got Google Drive and Link. Now we copied the link already, so I'm going to click Link. Now I'll right click Paste, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control V, and the link to your video will go right into this box. Click Add Link, and now here's my screencast, and my name is included, which I added to my Google Slides presentation. The other option would have been to click Add, go to Google Drive, and notice how the Recent tab has been selected. When you click Recent, your most recent screencast will appear right here under Today. I could have also clicked Add, and this would have been another way that I could have added my screencast. Since you're ready to turn this in, you'll click the Turn In button, and then Turn In. Now your screencast is complete. Close out of Google Classroom, and if you want to see any of your other screencasts, just click this arrow and you can see any of the recordings that you've made so far. If you opened a new tab and went back to Google Drive, clicking on Drive will allow you to navigate to your Screencastify folder, which has been created automatically. I like to highlight this and change the color. So I right click, I go to Change Color, and I like to make it either red or orange so it stands out. That way I know that my screencasts are right here. But that's just a tip. It's really personal preference. I'm Mark Rep. Thank you again for joining me and good luck creating your screencasts and your Google Slides. Bye-bye.